One of the most common questions I get is, what is the best way to learn programming? How do I get started with coding in 2021, in 2022, in 2023, whatever that year is. And I want to dedicate this video a little bit to tell you how learning to code itself has evolved over a few years, over the last few decades, not even years. And what is something which is going to be the future of learning to code, not just programming, not just coding in general, but how people learn to code. Just to give you a glimpse of companies and solutions and startups working in that space and what does it look like. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So let's go back into the time of 1990s and 2000s when programming and everything was mostly taught using books and these books could be printed these books could be ebooks even at that time computers were not very popular but still there was internet people were able to download little files not huge files like video files yet so as a developer as someone who's trying to learn something new your best resource was to learn them from books whether that's a language whether that's some sort of framework some new technology operating systems how to work with c c plus plus things like these books were your best and the only option available. Fast forward one more decade and you will see a lot of video sites booming up. YouTube still is one of the most popular ways to learn programming, but websites like Udemy and other video-based websites came up. Video became a much popular way of learning because obviously compared to books, it provided a much more interactivity in terms of other people, other person actually showing you the exact things you need to do inside a code editor or inside your environment. And that was much better in terms of just reading about it or just seeing blurred screenshots or prints of windows. Plus, it was much easier to update video based online lesson compared to something which is already printed and sitting with you in your cupboard, right? So it, it's difficult to buy a complete new book for a new change compared to just buy an online course or maybe just swap a couple of videos on YouTube with the new ones. Now, if you have been paying attention to the space, the next phase of learning to code online is truly interactive and it's much more interactive than just video based learning because video again is still one way communication just like books at the end of the day the instructor tells you something to do or tells you what you're doing and you still have to absorb or memorize it and then later down the line use it but if you take a look at the ecosystem right now you would see a lot of websites like codedam obviously is one scrimba is a great example free code camp is a great example these websites what they are doing the whole ecosystem of these companies and startups which are heading more into interactive learning programming is that we are pushing more of learning by doing at the same time so we are reducing the time of you as a developer to start doing with the things you're learning and the fundamental reason that a few companies like this are pushing this change is because that is the fundamental way developers have al always learned when you read a book you don't learn when you are reading it you learn when you are applying it similarly with videos when you're absorbing that information that information is not very useful until and unless you start applying it to some mini project, some example or something where you are using what you are actively learning. This is the fundamental reason why we also say in programming, it's, it's just like going to gym. You cannot read about push-ups. You have to do push-ups to actually get back the result. Similarly, you cannot just read about programming or watch programming related content and think that you will become a great developer you actually have to get your hands dirty with code and these new platforms code dam scrimba free code camp these platforms provide you the ability to interact with code as you are learning it as you are completing courses as you are building apps and so on now of course this has not been possible before first of all compute being not available as such so if you wanted to build a site like codam you would face a lot of trouble if you try to do that in 29 or 2010 or 2011 because aws was still coming up with a lot of new services and cloud wasn't that popular so containers were not that popular docker was not that popular so we need separate 
create containerized environments for you to play and experiment and do all sorts of stuff, whether that's in the browser itself, whether that's using some other environment, but we need to provide you with some online cloud experience. And that has been just been relatively cheaper to work with, both in terms of cost and in terms of accessible so it has not been accessible before if you wanted to do something like this you probably would need to set up your own infrastructure but now thanks to a lot of enhancement in browser apis as well as in cloud infrastructure you will see a lot of these functionalities being possible even if you look at something like stack let's which is building a IDE like experience within the browser itself. So they don't even require a server to execute Node.js like things, which I still feel is pretty early in its regard to API supports and everything. But that's definitely an interesting experiment, which shows you that how much people are pushing in the direction of interactive learning and learning to code by doing within the browser without actually leaving your browser for a VS code like experience, right? So we are trying to do that same thing uh, that is interacting with the code while you're learning, while you're doing, but instead of just passive content, that is video, these companies are pushing more into active learning where you learn by looking at the video or the whatever the instructor is teaching you and then immediately interacting with the code as well. So to summarize, obviously books work. That is why more developers were born in that era. Videos also work. That's why more developers came into the field. I come from a time where videos and blogs and those sort of things were more popular. But the shift is definitely into interactive learning to code. And as the technology enhances, not only it will get cheaper, but it will get better. It will get more accessible to a lot of other people because it is fundamentally a great way even for people who don't have a higher threshold or a higher bar to learn programming. I mean, they probably might be someone who would give up after a couple of videos because it might seem boring. This would actually push them to learn as well because that aha moment of, oh, this is how this works or, oh, I can actually get inside the playground and edit some stuff and see how everything is working. So if that triggers their light bulb, if, if that is the aha moment for them, we would probably see a lot more people being able to get comfortable with developer related stuff than before, right? So this is the future learning programming by interactive means, whether that's through CodeDown, whether that's through any other website, which is pushing that initiative is going to be the future of learning to program. If you take a look at CodeDown's recent course, for example, the Tailwind CSS course which we launched that is one of our first fully interactive courses where you would not only just be learning through video lessons but you can just get into the playground interface like almost immediately just minimize the video and in the background you will see that the person you as a developer pretty much has a completely set up environment for you waiting for you to complete challenges, run tests, pass them and move on to the next one. So the iteration cycle of learning and then applying, then learning and then applying is basically very, very, very short. You learn and apply really quickly. And that's what it takes to learn and just memorize and solidify your understanding as a developer as well. So you can expect to see such more such courses on CodeDAM in the full stack learning path, in the Web3 learning path. We are also working on something with Python and a lot more is coming to CodeDAM this year. So make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel so that you obviously receive these updates. But I would also want to know more about other websites in the space, what you think is the best solution, which ones you have tried so far, which ones do you like, you don't like, and why let's discuss a few things in the comments that is all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of codedamps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching